Okay, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the equilateral triangle corollary. And we talked about isosceles triangles. Now we're going to take it one step further. Uh, remember to have lots of pens and pencils uh, to write down some of these. I have two highlighters, I have two pencils today. So the equilateral triangle corollary, we have to understand what an equilateral triangle is. And an equilateral triangle is a triangle with three congruent sides, or all sides congruent. So I'm going to highlight my congruent sides in yellow, and I'm going to put my congruent marking. So congruent, congruent, congruent. So if you ever see that, you know that it is an equilateral triangle where the sides are congruent. The other thing you can see is that they are all equal angles. Equal angle, equal angle, equal angle. So as soon as you see all three angles are congruent or all three sides are congruent, this corollary holds true. And what it says is if a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. Or it says if a triangle is equiangular, then it is equilateral. So again, the same thing. And this is your congruent statement. If angle A is congruent to angle B, which is congruent to angle C, then AB is congruent to BC, which is congruent to CA. Okay, so let's look at one example. As I look at this example, I see that I have an equilateral triangle, right? We have this side, uh, SV, congruent to VT, congruent to ST. So I know that my angles are equal to each other. Okay, now how many, if we remember, there are 180 degrees for every triangle. So a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So if we have 180 degrees and we have three angles, if we did 180 divided by three, that would mean that each angle always equals 60 degrees. So there are two ways that we can attack this problem because this is telling us that this angle, angle V, is equal to 7x plus 4. So one way you could do it is you could go 7x plus 4 and you could add it to 7x plus 4. And you could add it to 7x plus 4 because those are the three angles. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and that equals 180. And then you could go, okay, I'm going to solve this equation. 7 plus 7 plus 7, I would go 21x plus 12 is equal to 180. And then I would subtract 12, and I would get 21x is equal to 168. And then I would divide 168 by 21. And you get x equals 8. So then when you know that x equals 8, then you take your x equals 8 and you plug it in over here. Okay? And it's 7 times 8 plus 4 which is 56 plus 4, which again, we talked about that is 60 degrees, okay? That would be one way that you would be able to solve that one. Another way might be a little bit quicker is if you see that it is equilateral, you know that it's equiangular, what you can do is you can take that angle measurement, and this is a second option. You don't have to do this one. You have two options, and you go 7x plus 4 is equal to 60. A little bit quicker. And then you subtract 4, and you get 7x is equal to 56. Divide by 7 this time, and you get x equals 8. So either way you do it, you're going to get the same answer. Okay, just two different ways of doing it. If you want to go this way and make everything the same because all triangles have three angles that add up to 180, that's perfectly fine. If you want to do it this way because you can jump a step and say, oh, I see that it's equilateral, 
So I know that this angle has to be 60 degrees. I can go a little bit quicker. Okay. Let's scroll down. For the second example, okay, I'm going to do the quick version for the second example. And I'm going to say, oh, I see that it's equilateral. I'm going to highlight my equilaterals because it's always good just to see for visual effects there. And then it gives me my angle of 5N. And I know that each angle in an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. So I'm going to go 5n is equal to 60. I'm going to divide by 5. And I get n equals 12. Okay? n equals 12. Okay? I would like you to try number 6 on your own. It's pretty straightforward. As we come down to the last four examples, on example seven, we see that it is equiangular. And from the corollary, we know that if it's equiangular, it is also equilateral. So I'm going to highlight these sides as well. And I'm going to say if it's equilateral, this side of 9R is congruent to this side of 5R plus 8. So my equation would be 9R is equal to 5R plus 8. And then subtract 5R and you get 4R is equal to 8. Divide it by 4. R equals 2. So we know that R equals 2 and if R equals 2 then VT is 5R plus 8. So I'll take it over here and 5R plus 8 would be 5 times 2 plus 8. Now we're dealing with sides, so they don't have to add up to 60 or 80 or 180 or 90. We're just finding a measurement of a side here. So that would be 10 plus 8, which is 18. Okay. Why don't you try number eight here with the same concepts? And why don't you try the last two on the bottom as well? Bring them to class tomorrow and we'll go over them. But again, the key things to remember are that, and I'll go back to the top of my page here. Once a triangle is seen as equilateral, all sides are congruent, then we know that all angles are congruent. And if all angles are congruent, each angle is 60 degrees, 100% of the time. And if it's already equiangular, then we know that it has to be equilateral. Okay, very straightforward. If you have any questions, bring them tomorrow, and we'll go over them. Thank you.